Next, from Springfield, we talked to State Representative Ron Sandek about legislation he's filed that would allow municipalities to seek bankruptcy protection under Chapter 9 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. This runs about 10 minutes. Ron Sandak, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. I'm going to remind our viewers that you were formerly the mayor of uh, Downers Grove. You have a piece of legislation uh, concerning municipal bankruptcy. Why are you looking into that issue legislatively? What's my motivation? Yeah. Um, well, the, the world is as it is. We're Sorry. living in Sorry. very lean times. And every unit of government, in my estimation, ought to be given every tool in the toolbox to avail itself, every opportunity to take care of itself and fend for itself. I think what we learned in the governor's state of the state and budget address is that pretty lean times are ahead for the state of the state and for its municipalities. Currently, Chapter 9, Article 9 of the Bankruptcy Code provides relief, not liquidation relief, but reorganization relief for municipalities. It does require a state to authorize it a filing or be that a filing be permitted before they can avail themselves of that. My bill, it's, uh, House Bill 298 is very simple. It just authorizes municipalities to avail themselves of Chapter 9 if they otherwise qualify. Now we have uh, famously, the Supreme Court just heard this argument on pensions and whether they can be cut and the Constitution says they can't be cut or diminished. but. That constitutional provision, if I'm correct, only applies to state employees, does it not? Not municipal employees. That's right. Um, though the same rules are going to be in play with municipal pensions if they're tested. But of course, I mean, how that ties into my bill is really not a function of anyone having their pensions eliminated or diminished. Uh, the, the instructive case of Detroit actually adds credence to this. Uh, many people don't know. Every pensioner in the Detroit system will be paid. Their COLA can be reduced from 3% to 2%, but their entire principal benefits and all go forward payments with the reduction of one percentage point on the growth of those pensions pretty much remains the same. So what happened in Detroit was a restructuring. Um, the, the corporate entity basically got more time to work with their creditors, restructure some, uh, push out payments on others, work with the unions in the, you know, in the collective bargaining realm, and they came to an agreement. It's just a structured, organized mechanism with the creditors committee and, of course, a trustees and a judge in order to determine what's in the best interest of taxpayers to that municipality. I think our taxpayers throughout Illinois ought to have those same uh, availabilities. Yeah, because you, you look at certain pension plans at different cities, and I would say they famously vary. Chicago, uh, not all of them are bad, but some are disastrous. Uh, and if a city, let's say, like a Chicago, could declare bankruptcy, then in effect it would break the legal obligation to the pensions, but there would be, as you said, with Detroit, it, you'd start over and restructure. But it's not to say you would necessarily start from zero or that you wouldn't pay them anything, but it oh, would hardly. restructure the deal. I mean, I think it's important for people to understand the context. Chapter 9 or Article 9, is something only a municipality can afford themselves of. Only a municipality can present a plan to the bankruptcy court to readjust their obligations. That has implications for municipal bondholders. It has implications for pensioners and of course for the ongoing services the city provides. In that instance, city may, may determine they don't want to provide a certain service any longer going forward. They may provide for a different vendor for certain services. They then also have some leverage to negotiate with their public pensions and their public unions to determine their go forward. Um, I, I look at it as a last chance. No mayor wants to take their city into bankruptcy. That's hardly a badge of honor. Instead, it's a measure of last resort. And you only do that if you know, basically everything becomes unhinged and no one's acting in a reasonable manner. But you need that final place where we have a... You know, a, a unbiased third party, which is a, a judge and uh, a bankruptcy trustee, to say, okay, here's what we're going to do, and it provides a forum for adjudication and restructuring. 24 states, Terry, have this. 24. Since 1937, I think there's been 600 municipal bankruptcies, 
of varying degrees. Uh, Vallejo, California, Stockton, California, San Bernardino, California, and lastly, Detroit, Michigan. And the capital of Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. also declared well, bankruptcy. You, and what's interesting, the state of Pennsylvania, if you remember back to the 90s, um, there were a bunch of towns in Pennsylvania that were on the brink, and they put an in-between step, and actually my bill talks about that too. It's a required non-binding you know, mediation prior to filing. In, in many of the, you know, Harrisburg being an exception, but many towns in Pennsylvania went right to the brink because they were old steel mill towns and they needed to recalibrate, Pittsburgh being most conspicuous, and kind of realign to the new world economy. As a mayor, one of the, one of the complaints that all uh, mayors that I've talked to uh, have is that the legislature would be telling the cities to pay more to fire police on their pensions. Uh, and it was the unfunded mandates. How much of a problem is that still going on or has the legislature in your estimation understood the message? Well, this legislator has understood that message for a while. And I, re I regularly remind my colleagues that when we pass new laws that are new mandates that are go unfunded, um, all we're doing is sticking our local units of government with another requirement that costs money. And all it is is the best suggestion, kind of a big brother, you do this, and we're not providing resources. Um, so of course we have to get out of that business. And you know, anecdotally, Terry, unfunded mandates, many people have focused on the unfunded as the evil word in that term. I don't disagree. But we ought to pay more attention just to the term mandate because not all great thinking is centralized in Springfield. Towns can determine for themselves their course of conduct. So, so can school boards. Parents, voters, um, local control, and voter empowerment really is felt most profoundly at the local level. So I think we could do a lot to help our municipalities out by getting off their back, staying out of their way and giving them all the tools to fend for themselves. And then the last question, you're on your bill, you're going to be having a committee hearing coming up. If it were to be enacted in the law, when, what would be the effective date? It would be effective you know, upon the governor's signature and it would only be a prospective opportunity. Um, Friday's hearing is really meant as a true subject matter educational forum. There will be bankruptcy lawyers that have practiced in other states in Chapter 9 proceedings. There will be an um, investment banker that will talk about some of the uh, municipal bond holder issues and probably dispel some uh, issues that popped in a famous uh, media release around here that likes to scream and yell about how horrific things can be and dispel some old wives tales. There are easy ways um, so that a bankruptcy being afforded to municipalities can be a win-win and really fortify taxpayers and citizens. All right, Ron Sandak, thank you. Thank you, Terry.